Lord dealt with me on Sunday, but the Lord had different plans, and I'm, I'm happy for that. And so I bring it here to you tonight. If you turn in your Bibles with me to Romans chapter 8, I'm going to start in verse number 37. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Please say when you got it, amen. 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 As you can see, there's a little bit of a drip here today. Um, so I have contacted the landlord. He was supposed to send someone out yesterday, but they never called me, nor did anyone come to my knowledge. And so um, it looks like it's coming from the top of the building. So just be patient with us. Uh, we'll get it fixed as soon as he's able to respond. And also keep our, our legal matters in prayer. It is not done. It is just in a waiting and holding period. I'm assuming I'll be fighting this for the next month or so, potentially longer than that. So pray that we get favor from the landlord and with the judge uh, over our case in Jesus name. Amen. amen. All right. Romans chapter eight, verse 37. If you got to say amen. amen. Paul said, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Verse 38, he said, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor depth, excuse me, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Today I want to preach to you from this topic, victim versus victor. Praise God. We're going to be victors in Jesus' name. Come on, let's pray that the Holy Ghost help us here tonight. Let's let the Lord have his way. Surrender our hearts and minds that God would have his way tonight. Father, we thank you today, Lord God, that you brought us out of darkness and into marvelous light. Lord, we pray here today, first of all, a prayer of repentance, Lord. Lord, I pray that you forgive us of all sin, Lord God, all iniquity, Lord Jesus. Anything, Father, that we have said or done or even thought, Lord God, I pray, Father, tonight that you would forgive us, Lord God, that you would cleanse us, Lord God, from all unrighteousness, Lord. Uh, we come before your presence together as a body, Lord God, uh, praying, Lord God, that your will would be done in this place tonight, Lord. Uh, help me, Lord God, to preach and to deliver your word under the unction of the Holy Ghost, Lord, uh, that it should destroy every yoke of the enemy off of the necks of your people here tonight, Lord God, uh, and grant us victory in Jesus. Jesus name or put the devil under our feet Lord God uh, and help us to walk forward in power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost uh, we'd be careful to give you all the glory the honor and the praise in the mighty name of Jesus we pray uh, somebody shout amen to the Lord amen. hallelujah Jesus come on and clap your hands in the Lord come on I feel the Holy Ghost trying to move in this place come on and let's worship the Lord for us Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Victim versus victor. Please excuse me on the play on words. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> Amen. When you, when you preach, you may, you, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Uh, this current world that we're living in is pushing what I'm calling tonight a victim mentality. Everybody's trying to be a victim. And the world is trying to tell every people group, some way, shape, or form, that they are a victim. Right. Uh, but I reject that in Jesus' name. I don't buy into it. I'm not, I'm not, it's not my plan nor the will of God to get political in here tonight. But just say I don't buy into the idea that I am a victim in any way, shape, or circumstance. Right. Amen. But however, there's a popular notion going forth that everyone is a victim somehow. A victim of this or a victim of this a victim of this circumstance, a victim of this condition, a victim of your childhood, a victim of your stature, a victim of your health. Right. The world will tell you you're a victim of your financial situation, that you're a victim of your parental situation, right. you're a victim for this, you know. And, and, and that victim mentality is very popular. Uh, politicians do use it in order to gain power and influence right. because they will position you as the victim and position themselves as the solution. Right. However, that never works. There's only one solution, praise God, and his name is Jesus. Amen. And so we have to be careful that in the house of God, we don't adopt the victim mentality. 
because it, it is not profitable when it comes to living for God. A victim mentality is really a state of belief or an attitude that all of your problems, all of your issues and shortcomings, uh, you attribute it to the fault of someone else. Amen. That's what a victim mentality says. It's somebody else's fault. Um, it's somebody else's fault why I have this problem. It's somebody else's fault why I have this shortcoming. It's, it's, it's no fault of my own. Maybe it's not even somebody. Maybe it's just how the cards were dealt in your life. The victim mentality said, well, this is just the hand that I've been dealt. I'm only playing the hand that I've been dealt. Put very plainly, it teaches you to blame things that you are going through on other people or other things or other circumstances. And, 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 and you know, if we'll be honest, sometimes it, it feels good to play the victim, especially when it is righteous. It, but it is not helpful in making you victorious. Praise God. That's the issue with having a victim mentality is that it never actually leads to you getting any victory. You can have the victim, victim mentality all you want to, but it will not lead to you getting any victory. It does not work. It is not profitable for you. And people that choose to adopt the victim mentality never actually end up having any victory. Uh, the reason for this is that pride and self-preservation -pre come into the play. Hey, praise God. Amen. If you choose to have the victim mentality, you'll always be a victim and never actually have any victory over the things that you claim that are ailing you. Uh, but, but tonight I come to tell you that you are not a victim, that you are a victor. Praise God. You are not oppressed. Praise God. You are more than a conqueror. Praise God. Through him that loved us. I love this opening scripture because Paul said, I am persuaded. This, he's convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt that death can't do anything. That life can't do anything. That angels, come on somebody, can't do anything. That principalities can't do anything. That powers can't do anything. Nor things present, nor things to come. He said, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature can separate us from the love of God. That means we don't have any business blaming anything thing or anyone else for our problems. Uh, we've got the victory in spite of circumstance. Uh, we, uh, help, I feel my help coming. Hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, we got the victory in spite of your ailment, uh, in spite of your upbringing. Praise God. Um, in spite of the abuse that you suffered, you're still uh, victorious. Hallelujah, Jesus. Um, in spite of your bank account, you're still, come on somebody, you are victorious. Uh, and it's really a mentality that it has to do with your external circumstance. Help us, Holy Ghost. Well, it becomes easy for us to get this mentality because the victim mentality comes as a result of sin. We only get to the third chapter of the garden before we see the victim mentality begin to manifest. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, verse 9, And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Notice Adam's response. He said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and hid myself. The Lord said, who told you thou was naked? Amen. That's another sermon I have stored up waiting for the Lord. <laughs> who told you that? <laughs> Sometimes we're telling God some stuff that God didn't tell us, and you got to ask yourself, where did I get that piece of information? <laughs> uh, never mind. I'm not preaching that tonight. <laughs> I'll wait on the Lord for that one. <laughs> who told you thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree wherefore I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, the woman. <laughs> Whom thou gavest to me to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Here is the victim mentality on full display. Adam didn't own up to what he had done. Instead, he adopted a victim mentality and began to blame his wife and by proxy blaming God because he said, the woman that you gave me, she gave me the fruit. Instead of being a man and a leader in the garden and say, no, Lord, I did this of my own accord. I did this of my own will. I ate the fruit. I made the decision. Instead, he adopted a victim mentality and began to point the finger really at God through his wife. Holy Ghost. And, and, and Eve didn't fare any better because he went to ask Eve, what have you done? Uh, and instead of saying that she violated her authority and gave Adam the fruit after knowing better, she instead adopted the victim mentality and blamed it on the devil who tricked her. 
even though her story admits that she knew good and full well she wasn't supposed to eat the fruit. She knew good and full well what the consequences of eating or even touching the fruit was. Instead of admitting their faults to the Lord and allowing the Lord to bring them out of that, God had to kind of play daddy to them to get down to the root issue because sin brought the victim mentality into their mindset. Mm. And oftentimes, sin will do the same thing for us. And it'll, it'll have us blaming our problems instead of taking responsibility for the decisions that we have made. It'll have us pointing the finger instead of being honest with God and say, God, I sinned. God, I messed up. It'll have us, oh, help me, Holy Ghost, shifting the responsibility to other parties surrounding us instead of owning up to our own faults and mistakes in the issue. And God had to weed through all of that to finally get to a solution. The a lamb that will cover their sin and cause them to go away from God in the presence of the garden. For myself, I've chosen to leave the victim mentality behind because I found that it's not profitable to get me closer to God and it does not lead to victory. I choose to lay aside the victim to become the victor. Our first point tonight is to help you to understand that a victim mentality does not get you closer to God. You'd be surprised, amen, you would think that God would want to join us when we begin to tell God of the situations that he already knows about. Help us, Holy Ghost. Amen. When God wants us to do certain things, we begin to remind God of the state that we are in. We begin to remind God of our ailments. And I don't find anywhere in Scripture where that is profitable. But as a matter of fact, when God begins to tell Moses to go into Egypt and to tell Pharaoh to let my people go, Moses reminds God of why he can't do the thing that God is telling him he needs to do. He begins to tell him, uh, uh, what if they don't believe me? And then God shows him his power with the rod and the staff and the leprous hand. And then he begins to say, but Lord, I can't speak. Huh? And finally, God gets angry with Moses and said, who made your mouth? Huh? Or the deaf or the sing or the dumb or the blind? Huh? Have not I the Lord? Huh? It's not profitable for us to present our situation in the face of God huh? when God is calling us to do something. Huh? When God is calling us out, it's not profitable for us to play the victim huh? in that moment because the victim robs you of your faith. You see this in the full display in Numbers chapter 13, verse number 30. As the spies are coming out from the wilderness, God had sent them over into the land. These special 12 men, the leaders of the tribe of Israel, one from every tribe, and Joshua from the tribe of Levi. God had sent them over into the land with instructions to go and search out the land. Look at the number of people that are there. See if they're great or they're small. Look at the cities, whether they be fortified. Go gather some fruit of the land and bring it back. And these 12 spies, they did it. 40 days they were searching through the land, looking at all the promises that God God had for them, uh, the thing that God had swore by himself to give to Abraham, Isaac, and to Jacob, uh, and to his seed that would come after. These 12 spies came back uh, with a report saying, here's what's in the land, and here's the people that's in the land, and here's some of the fruit of the land. Nevertheless, it's a large land, uh, and it swallows up the inhabitants thereof. Uh, and they brought an evil report, and the people began to begin afraid uh, at what God had told them was theirs. Uh, and the Bible says in verse number 30, Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it. The first thing you got to understand about a victor as a victor is able to look opposition square in the face and say, let's go up at once. Hallelujah. I don't care how big the giant is. I don't care how big the problem is. I don't care how I don't care how impossible the situation is. Let us go up at once and possess it. Praise God. Oh. Uh. Thank you, Jesus. The victor is not looking at the impossibility of the situation. The victor is not considering the past 400 years of slavery that's in their past. Uh, and not considering the fact that they were just slaves. Uh, the victor says, if God has it for us, uh, we're going to get up and do something about it. But the victims came right behind him. Verse 31, but the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Verse 32, they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land though through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature, 
and we and there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were, look at this, we were in our own sights as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. See, the victim is not able to see clearly. Oh, Jesus, help me, Holy Ghost. The victim looks at all of their past. We're just a little people. Huh? We're just slaves. Huh? We just come out of Egypt just, as, just the other day. Huh? And this land is huge. It swallows everybody up. Huh? See, the victim mentality robs you of faith. Because you, instead of focusing on what God has for you, huh, instead of focusing on the action that you need to take, you'll focus on the problem and who is to blame. Instead of focusing on what you need to do in order to achieve the will of God, uh, you start focusing on the issues. Huh? Well, it's large, huh? and there's giants over there, and we're nothing but little bitty grasshoppers. Huh? I can't do, we can't do this. Huh? That's a victim mentality. Praise God. Huh? We need to get rid of the victim mentality huh? because God looked at that mentality and said, that's an evil that's an evil report. Stop looking at your past. Stop looking at your faults. Stop looking at your flaws. Stop looking at your defects. Stop looking at what you aren't. And look at the God that has called you to go forward. Oh, but just like the people of God, it wasn't long before the whole congregation began to cry. They began to complain. And they began to complain and murmur against Moses. Numbers chapter 14, the very next chapter, the next verse. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. And the people wept that night. Look at this. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. If they can't murmur against God. They don't know that they're actually murmuring against God. They're going to come against the men of God that are leading them. And the whole congregation said unto them, would God that we had died in the land of Egypt or would God we had died in the wilderness can I tell you how you know if you have a victim mentality if you find yourself complaining and murmuring a lot you probably got a victim mentality oh I didn't think that would get too many amens praise God if you find yourself complaining and murmuring a lot you have a victim mentality God does not favor people who complain and murmur. God is not on your side if complaining and murmuring is in your mouth and in your tongue. And this time, God had had enough with their complaining and murmuring. And the complaints that they said to God, God brought it to pass. Numbers 14, verse 26, And the Lord spake unto Moses and said unto Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? See, they thought they were murmuring against Moses and Aaron, uh, but God understood that Moses and Aaron uh, were only following the instructions that he uh, had given them. Um, so who they were really complaining against uh, was God. Um, and God said, How long shall I bear uh, with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I've heard the murmurings of the children of Israel which they murmur against me. See, you think it's God is not around when you're behind closed doors. You think the Lord is not there in your private conversation in the bathroom. You think God is not there when you're gossiping. You think God is not there, but God is hearing every bit of it. And ah, oh, and help us, Holy Ghost, God forbid him that he finally has enough. Verse 28, he said unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, uh, as you have spoken in my ear. Oh, excuse me. Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as you have spoken in my ear, so will I do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness. Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. And all that were numbered of you according to the whole number from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against me. They got what they complained. They said, would to God we fall in the wilderness? God said, okay, that's enough. You've been speaking it. Here it goes. Help us, Holy Ghost. Victim doesn't get you closer to God. And the only people that were able to escape this was Caleb and Joshua because they had a victor mentality. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. We've got to get rid of our complaining. We've got to get rid of our murmuring. And we've got to go forward in faith. I tell you what, the devil gave you that victim mentality. And we just need to go ahead and give that victim mentality right back to God. 
help us, Holy Ghost. Um, see, a victim mentality will cause you to forget what God has done for you. They forgot the ten plagues that happened in Egypt. Um, they forgot about the blood turning into water. Um, they forgot about the frogs coming out the river. Um, they forgot about the flies. Hello, somebody. Um, they forgot about the lice. Uh, they had forgot about the hail mingled with fire. Uh, they forgot about God preserving their cattle uh, and God setting a hedge of protection around them as he brought destruction to the rest of the land of Israel. They forgotten about the blood that saved them from the death angel. Uh, they had forgotten about the Red Sea parting and walking over on dry ground. Uh, they ain't even forgotten about speaking to the Lord on Mount Sinai uh, with the whole mountain is covered with smoke and fire. See, a victim mentality will make you forget your testimony. Start complaining and murmuring and even say, well, it was better back in Egypt. Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. Oh, glory to God. And I tell you, we need to get rid of that victim mentality. We need to give that right on back to the devil in Jesus' name. And said, I'm not going to sit here and complain about my situation anymore. I'm getting up and going up at once. Oh, I ain't got nobody. I'm going up at once. I'm going up at once. Let the, see, let the victim sit there and more murmur and complain about it and sulk in their problems. But the victors get up and, ah, oh, Jesus, do something about it. Paul echoes this in Philippians chapter 2, verse 14. This is an NLT. Look at what he said. Uh, do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. I'll see that again. Nobody praised God on that one. Do everything without, that's not up there, complaining and arguing. Amen. It happens. You get frustrated, you start complaining. You get tired, you start, I ain't got no real people in the house this this evening. <laughs> hallelujah. You get, you get, you get, you get kind of on the edge. You get anxious and you start. Hallelujah. But it's not helping you any. <laughs> hallelujah. Jesus. All it does is go and find other people that, that had the same mentality. <laughs> and you wonder why you're surrounded by nothing but this foolishness and you can't seem to break loose of it. Oh, do everything without complaining and arguing. Huh? Why? Because no, no one can criticize you. <laughs> oh, help us, Holy Ghost. <laughs> See, if people are watching you, whether you know it or not. Um, they're looking at the things that you say huh, to determine whether or not they want to follow the God that you serve. And if they see you complaining and murmuring and arguing and bickering all the time, they go, well, I don't want to, uh -uh. I don't know what God you're serving, but ain't no peace there. Ain't no joy there. Ain't no victory there. Ah, praise God. Sometimes you just need to get to an altar, and if you really got a complaint, take it up with the Lord. Ah, Jesus, and say, Lord, I'm having a tough time. I got a victim mentality on me, God. I need you to help me today. Praise God. Secondly, faith in Jesus can take you from victim to victor. Notice this, John chapter 5. Man, we used to, I used to preach this all the time when the name of the church was Bethesda, but I haven't preached it in a while. We're going to talk about it today. John chapter 5, verse 2 says, now there, now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda. That means house of mercy, y'all. Right. Having five porches, and in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Ooh. See, victims are waiting. Victors are moving. Okay, y'all get that in a second. Verse 4, for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatever disease he had. Amen. We got a pool right there in the middle of the sanctuary. I don't know if there's any angels in there, but it might work. You hop in there and splash around a little bit. Praise God. No, no takers. Amen. Okay, we'll keep it moving. Praise God. Uh, verse 5, and a certain man was there which had an infirmity 38 years. And when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? And the impotent man answered him, Sir, he didn't know who Jesus was. Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool. You see the victim mentality. Help us, Holy Ghost. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. 
This violates a lot of our theology. Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. If Jesus were to do this in this service here today, some people would be offended. Some people would absolutely be offended. Because Jesus seeing this man laying there, first of all, waiting for a moving of an angel. Victims wait until the right time. Victors make the right time. Okay, prove that, preacher. There's a Syrophoenician woman, a Gentile, that came to Jesus talking about she needed a healing for her dog. And Jesus said, it's not me to give the children's bread to dogs. Some of y'all would have been offended and left because the Lord had called you a dog, especially of the female sort. Praise God. But she said, Lord, even the dogs get the crumbs that fall it wasn't a time for the Gentiles to receive the children's bread. It wasn't a time. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. It wasn't a time for her to receive that miracle. But faith. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. She could have left soaking and saying, oh, the Lord rejected me because it wasn't my time. Uh, and the Lord is not favoring me. I'm not following that Jesus. Uh, he didn't want to connect with me in my circumstance. Uh, he told me I was a dog, so I'm leaving this Lord. I'm not following him no more. She said, okay, I'll be a dog. But even a dog can get a crumb. Hey. Jesus said, that's faith right there. Oh, and he found this man sitting there laying for 38 years. Jesus did not ask him about his condition. He did not try to psychoanalyze what he had been through, what his mama had did to him, what his daddy had did to him, what his aunt and uncle had did to them, the environment he grew up in, whether he had a mother or a daddy, what he happened to him. He didn't ask him, how did this happen? When did this happen? Let's go back to the place that it happened. Oh, Jesus. He didn't comment on how long it had been in that case. <laughs> oh, man, 38 years. Man, that's a tough thing. <laughs> wow, you've been dealing with this for 38 years. <laughs> oh, Jesus didn't even stretch out his hand to help the man. Oh, help us, Holy God. That's why I said it would violate a lot of what you think Jesus is <laughs> because we don't understand how the Lord works. <laughs> he works by faith. <laughs> See, I'm going to give you a clue. You can have a pity party all you want to. God's not joining you. He already, he already answered the pity on the cross. He had pity for the state of your soul. He answered that when he shed blood on the cross. But you can have your pity party and, well, look at me, up in 38 years. I've been in this thing 38 years. And furthermore, his complaint was, it's not even really my fault. Here we go, victim mentality. It's not even my fault, really. I, you see how I am. And I don't have anybody to help me. Which is true. And that's the tough thing about having a victim mentality. Sometimes your excuse is true. But even though it's true, it's not helpful to get you out. So what point does it make to dwell on the sincerity or the truth of your situation if it's not going to help you? Jesus didn't even ask him that. He had one question. Wilt thou? What do you want to do? Do you want to sit there lame or are you going to get up? What do you want to do? you want to complain about it or do you want a solution to your problem? Because the truth of the matter, most people don't want a solution. They want, com they want pity and company in their problem. And I'll be honest with you. I've been in some problems and, you know, when you're going through problems, sometimes we wear our problems as a badge. We're always going through. I'm tired. I'm hurt. I'm this, and I'm that, and I'm this, because we get used to attention that it brings us. And, uh, and even our requests for prayer become victim mentality. And that prayer ain't being answered in no way, because you don't want the prayer to be answered. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. You're going to be surrounded just by a whole bunch of other people that's waiting on the water, too. They probably got the same excuse as you got. I'm blind. I can't even see my way to the pool. Oh, Jesus. I'm a hard on man. The problem is everybody there got an excuse. Question is, do you want to be whole or not? If you do, get up. <laughs> it's 
all that Jesus said. After he said his excuse, rise up. <laughs> Which means, now, think about this practically. If I'm sitting here and I can't get up, and the Lord didn't stretch out his hand, that means that man had to try to put power in legs that had never had no power before. He had to push in ways that he had never pushed before in the last 38 years. And some of y'all in that situation right now, God is asking you to do some stuff that you refuse to do. You can complain about it all you want. But God said, just get up. God, it can't be that just easy. Just get up. I don't need some counseling sessions, Lord. I, oh, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need a class, Lord. How about the medication? You ain't got no medicine for me, Lord? No, just get up. Lord, you're not going to help me get up? No, you got the power. Just get up. This is challenging a lot of your faith right now. This is why we're not victorious, because we refuse to get up. Oh, Jesus. We sing the song, get up, get up, get up. But don't understand, the power is already there. The healing is already there. He's just waiting on you to exercise just a little bit of faith and say, I refuse to sit here any longer. Oh, the prophet Micah said, rejoice not against me, oh, my enemy, because when I fall, I shall arise. Get up. Stop the complaining. Stop the murmuring. Stop bringing up your past. Don't matter how long you had it. Don't matter how long you've been there. Do what God is telling you to do to come out and you'll be victorious. Hey, hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, we need to transform to being victorious in Jesus' name. See, that devil would like to get you to focus on how long you've been in that situation. He want to get you focused on the fact that Jesus ain't helping you get out of the situation. He wants to get you to focus on complaining. Uh, well, it's somebody else's fault. Uh, well, I don't have a man. Uh, and God is on the other side saying, just get up. Uh, if you exercise just a little bit of faith uh, and get up out, uh, God will deliver you. Uh, God will heal you. Uh, God will make you victorious. Huh, now sing, get up out that grave. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, Jesus. See, focusing on your past can rob you of your present faith. Focusing on why the problem is, is not helpful to solving the problem. Not always. Oh, because we're expert at our own issues. We are masters at our own afflictions. Oh, Jesus. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I pray the Lord deliver us. Deliver us here tonight because the third and last point is we are really victorious no matter the circumstance. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 57, Paul said, But thanks be to God, which gave us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody say, I got the victory. I got the victory. I got the victory. Say it like you mean it. Praise God. And if you don't mean it, if you don't mean it, just say, we need to pray through. Hallelujah. Because that's, that, that scripture is not in isolation. It's supposed to propel you to the next statement, which is this. 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. In the Lord. Paul said that victory is supposed to propel you to some action. You're not just supposed to say I'm victorious and sit still in the same situation. Doing the same thing you've been doing. Saying the same stuff you've been saying. Complaining the same complaint you've been complaining. He said get up and do something about it. Get to work then. Hey. It's not helpful to dwell upon your situation. You're experts at that. It's not helpful to remind the Lord you're of the storm and the severity of the storm. He knows you're in the storm. Praise God. He knows what you have need. The Bible says even before we ask. But he said, seek ye first. You got to do something. You got to seek him first. The kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. We've got to get out of that mentality. Can't be blaming everybody else. Victors take responsibility and make some changes. David is a beautiful example of this. When, he got, when Saul got caught in sin, Saul's not a good example. Don't be a Saul. Because when Saul messed up and Samuel, the man of God, came back and said, what are you doing? Because he was supposed to kill everything, right? He was supposed to kill all, everything, everybody and everything. But Samuel showed up, and Saul's like, I did it. And Samuel hears in the background, bah, bah. And he says, 
you did the will of God, the, the commandment I told you? He's like, yeah. He's like, well, then what's this bleeding of sheep that I hear? He's like, oh, that, that was the people that did that. I, that wasn't me. The victim. He's the leader in the situation. But he played the victim. It was the people. They wanted to keep the best of the stuff. So I said that, you know. And besides, we were just going to offer to God for a sacrifice anyway. Ooh, Jesus. And then Samuel had to rebuke him because that was the last straw for Saul. He said, God has rejected you and ripped the kingdom from you. Samuel got mad and put his hands on the man of God, ripped his garment. And Samuel turned back and said, now this day the kingdom is ripped from you. Tore him up. David wasn't perfect either. David has sin too. David's sin is arguably worse. <laughs> it's arguably, you know, he's sitting on the roof. I think the preacher, Brother Woods, was here talking about this last this Sunday. He's sitting on the roof when kings are supposed to be out to battle, taking his leisure because, you know, he'd done enough. You know, victims always think they've done enough, that they owed something. Somebody owe you nothing. Amen. We'll, move, we'll keep it moving. He's sitting up there taking his leisure. And I've, been, I've, 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 I've fallen into that trap too. I'm tired for the Lord. I've been fighting for the Lord. I need a break. And I identify exactly what that preacher said. It's, it's very easy to fall into that trap. And then you see old Bathsheba over there naked taking a bath, which I have some questions about that too. But we'll keep it moving. Praise God. She's taking a bath naked. He sees her. And he grabs her to come in. And he's the king. You can't say no to the king. You know, and he slept with her. And, you know, and the Lord not going to let you get away with that type of sin. You're going to have a child. And she's going to conceive. <laughs> You know, and, and, and now he tried to hide that sin. So he calls Uriah back from home from battle, and he sets Uriah up the same way Saul tried to set him up. He sends him out to battle, except David succeeded. <laughs> Sent him out to the battle. After he tried to get him drunk, go sleep with his wife, that didn't work. You know, sent him out to battle, had the man killed. And Nathan the prophet shows up a few days later, a few, few years later, actually, because Samuel's dead at this point. Nathan's the prophet now for David. He tells, him, tells David a sheep, and at the end of the story about some sheep and a wayfaring man, and essentially tells David, you're the man. But David's response is not like Saul. David went into fasting, and David went into repenting. He afflicted his soul, and Psalm 51 is his prayer. If you ever want to know the posture that God is looking for when you have messed up, Psalm 51 is it. And I'll read just one excerpt. Psalm 51, verse 3. Notice a victor mentality. Verse 3. For I acknowledge my transgression. And my sin is ever before me. Against thee, the only, have I sinned. And done this evil in thy sight. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest. And be clear when thou judgest. Saul blamed. David said, the right way. He's a king. Probably one of the most powerful kings in history. But he's before God saying, You're right, it's me. Didn't mention Bathsheba how beautiful she was or the fact that she was butt naked on the roof taking a shower. Didn't mention that he was tired and needed a break and rest. Didn't bring up none of the circumstances that caused him to sin. Or like Adam did. <laughs> he owned it and he took responsibility. That's what we need to do if we're going to be victorious. God, you're right. Mm. Victors search themselves first. Hallelujah, Jesus. Victors search themselves. It's not my manager's fault. It ain't my mama's fault. It's not daddy's fault. It ain't my friend's fault. It ain't my landlord's fault. It ain't Tico's fault. Holy Ghost. It's not my brother or my sister's fault, whether in the church or actual. I'm not looking at you. I'm not going to focus all my attention outwardly because I can't control other people. I have no control over situations. 
I have no control over their heart. I have no control over that. But what I do have control is myself. Praise God. And David said, I have sinned. I acknowledge that I'm the one that's wrong. My sin is ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned. When you get to that posture, you're in a prime place for God to make you victorious. Hallelujah, Jesus. See, victims are constantly comparing their situation to others. Victims are on honestly comparing what happened in somebody else's life or what happened over here. Victors are only start worried about their own walk. Peter himself had a moment of a victim mentality. He had forsaken the Lord. He had denied God and Jesus three times. It's a famous denial because he cursed doing it. As Jesus was being beaten, Peter was saying, I don't know that man. After walking with him for three and a half years. Ooh, help me, Holy Ghost. Praise God. If anybody got a right to play the victim, it's the Lord. He don't do it. <laughs> he could have went and say, hey, Peter, man, what happened, bro? <laughs> he showed up to Peter and said, lovest thou me more than these? He said it that three times. And then the third time, Peter had to finally come clean. I don't really love you like I'm supposed to. And this is Jesus' response to Peter in verse John chapter 21, verse 18. This is the only gospel this is in. And it, it's telling. Even the mightiest of men of God can be a victim. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. When you were young, you were able to do as you liked. You dressed yourself and went wherever you wanted to go. But when you were old, you will stretch out your hands and others will dress you and take you where you don't want to go. Jesus said this to let him know by what kind of death he would glorify God. Then Jesus told him, follow me. So Jesus pretty much told Peter straight up, you're going to die for me. It's my will for you to die. Ooh, what if God told you that today? Would you still serve God if you knew that you were going to die? Huh? Some of y'all, you, you might, but you also might say what Peter's getting ready to say. Verse 20, Peter turned around and saw behind them the disciple Jesus loved, the one who had leaned over to Jesus during supper and asked, Lord, who will betray you? Peter asked Jesus, what about him, Lord? Victim. Victims are always worried about what somebody else is doing. Because you got to understand the, 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 how, how real this really is. It was well known that John was the beloved of Jesus. John was the one that had all the favor with the Lord. So they're all sitting at dinner, and John's all cozied up with the Lord. John's getting revelation and instruction nobody else is getting. Jesus didn't look at nobody else at the cross and say, John, that's my mother. Mother, that's your son. It was John that he did that to. John is the disciple of love, the closest to Jesus. And Peter knew it. And so when it came time for Jesus to tell Peter his will and what Peter would have to suffer, Peter wants to try to compare what he has to do, go through with what John has to go through. Uh-huh. What about that saint over there? You favor him so much, what about him? He going to have to die too? Say you ain't thought that before. <laughs> Victims are always comparing. And the problem you with is that you spend so much time preparing that you're not doing, comparing that you're not doing the will of God. And notice Jesus' response. This is the Lord responds to you, just in case you're comparing yourself and you're praying. I'm, I can let, tell you how the Lord's going to respond right here, verse 22. Jesus replied, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? In other words, Peter, mind your business. <laughs> Call Jesus meek and mild now. He said, as for you, follow me. Get rid of the victim mentality. It doesn't matter what your brother has to do. It doesn't matter what your mother has to do, what your sister has to do. It doesn't matter what the saint down the row is doing. 
Doesn't matter what the church down the road is doing. All that matters is are you doing what God has for you to do? Because I got news for you. There is no record of John dying. Some scholars believe that he's one of the prophets that will testify in the, in the book of Revelation. That he, ne that he never died. Ooh. So let me ask you a question, victors. <laughs> is it wise to compare what you have to go through to what somebody else has to go through? Mm. We are victors. Peter had gotten this revelation because history records that at his death, they wanted to crucify him on Jesus. And he had gotten the message by this time. He said, I'm not even worthy to die the same death of Jesus. Crucify me upside down. And from that point on, they could beat Peter, and Peter would rejoice. Because it don't matter if they're beating me, I'm still victorious. Ooh, hallelujah, Jesus. And it don't matter if they were persecuted, because uh, James could write, count it all joy when you suffer divers' temptation, knowing that the trying of your faith worketh patience, uh, and let patience have a perfect worth. Uh, because even if you're being afflicted, uh, you're still victorious. Even if you're still being betrayed, uh, you're still victorious. Uh, even if you're in an uncomfortable situation, you're still victorious. Uh, as long as you're doing the will of God, uh, you are victorious. Oh, that's what Paul meant when he said, and nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through him that loved us, uh, for I am persuaded that neither death, uh, nor life, uh, nor angels, uh, nor principalities, uh, nor powers, uh, nor things present, uh, nor things to come, uh, nor height, uh, nor death, uh, nor any creature uh, shall be able to separate us uh, from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Uh, my circumstance don't matter. Uh, my condition don't matter. I'm still victorious. Uh, oh, praise God. Uh, my external state doesn't doesn't matter I'm still victorious it doesn't matter if I'm in darkness I'm victorious there if I'm on the mountaintop I'm victorious there if I'm in a valley of affliction I'm victorious there hallelujah if I'm in a storm I'm victorious if I'm in peace I'm victorious if I'm broke I'm victorious because I got the will of God and the love of God on my side and if God before y'all ain't with me yet and if God before me who can be against me hallelujah Jesus. look at your neighbor tell him I'm more than a conqueror I'm more than a conqueror. Come on, you can stand all over the place. Uh, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror through him that loved us. I say, church, we put away the victim mentality and say, let's go up at once. Let's go up at once. Let's go up at once and possess it. Who's with me here tonight? We're going up and possessing some things. We're going up at once. We are not grasshoppers. We've got the Lord on our side. We are not less than. We are the head and not the tail. Come on, somebody. We're above and not beneath. Doesn't matter how sick you are. You're still victorious. Come on, somebody. Doesn't matter what you've been through. You're still. Ah, help me, Holy Ghost. And it's high time we put down the victim mentality and get some faith and say, I will go forward. In Jesus' name, I'm getting up out of this place. I'm rising up and taking my bed, and I'm walking forward in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. I open up these altars here tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just let the will of the Lord be done. We're going to get rid of this victim mentality in Jesus' name. Because we are victorious. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you have bought the victory for us, Lord God. You won it at Calvary, Lord God. Oh, God, you shed your blood, Lord God, so that we could come out of sin, Lord. You filled us with your Holy Ghost, Lord God, so that we could live above sin. You gave us the power, Lord God. Oh, God, do the most power, Lord Jesus, oh, God, to lay hands on the sick, Lord God. You gave us the power to cast out devils, Lord God. You gave us the power to mortify the deeds of this flesh, Lord. Father, you've done all the work, Lord God, that we could ever need to be done. So, Lord, I pray 
standing here tonight, Lord God, uh, oh God, that you forgive us, Lord God, uh, of being a victim, Lord God, uh, after you have made us victorious, Lord God. Uh, I pray right now against that mindset, Lord God, uh, and I pray, Lord God, uh, that the weapons of our warfare, Lord God, uh, would take that thought and bring it into captivity, Lord God. Uh, take that imagination, Lord, uh, and cast it down uh, in this place, Lord. Uh, let the Holy Ghost, oh God, uh, begin to course uh, through our mind, Lord God, uh, and bring victory, Lord God, uh, right in our minds, oh God. Uh, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, uh, bring the revelation, Lord God, uh, that we have come out of darkness, Lord God. Uh, we're no longer slaves, uh, so we get rid of the slave mentality. You set us free, Lord God. Uh, give us a mindset of Caleb, Lord God, uh, that we should possess our mountain, Lord God. Uh, give us a mindset of Joshua, uh, that we should go forward, Lord God, uh, and be of good courage, Lord God. Uh, give us a mindset of Gideon, Lord God, uh, that though we be little, Lord God, uh, you have made us victorious, Lord God. Uh, give us a mindset of David, Lord God, uh, that our mistakes are our fault uh, and ever before us, Lord God. Uh, Lord, and I pray today, Lord God, uh, that you would renew our mind uh, in the Holy Ghost, Lord. Uh, have your way, O oh God. Uh, give the glory, O oh God. Uh, give the honor and the praise uh, in Jesus' name. Lord, 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 Lord. Heal us today, O oh God. Lord, Lord, Lord. Deliver us today, O oh God. Lord, Lord. Set us free today, O oh God. Lord, Lord. We bind Satan tonight, Lord God. That wants to put his mindset on us. He is a victim. We are not. We are victorious, O oh God. I bind that enemy right now in Jesus' name. Father, and I forbid him to operate, Lord God. And I command every mind in this place to be loose, Lord God. Rid us, Lord God, of heart and heart. In Jesus' name. Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to rise up today, Lord God. Rise out of affliction, Lord God. Rise out of darkness, Lord God. Rise up from the affliction of the past, Lord God. And help us, Father, to move forward in you, Lord God. Regardless if there's a Red Sea, Lord, we're going forward in Jesus' name.